So, hey guys, what's up? Um, I'm going to show you guys the new project car we got. Um, since the 44 is going to be on hold for a couple weeks. I went and bought a 1983 Ford Mustang GT50. T-top, four speed. Uh, we are, I got another project car coming. Or another parts car, not project car, parts car for this car. It's got good floors. You know, and plus there's some parts that I could part out and make a little bit of money off of, probably not a lot. But yeah, almost when you guys are in, you guys can get a look at it. The quarters are actually in pretty good shape. The only damage is like right here. Or somebody like, I'm assuming it hit the rear end of it. And it needs a rocker fixed right there. Um, but all the glass is solid, I mean. No cracks, no dings. The sides are in decent shape. And this project car's name is Rustang 5.0. Okay, it has a lot of shit ton of rust. But yeah, we jack we jacked it up, and messed with the rear end. Uh, it's got a locker in it, or I'm gonna call it a posi unit, but that's Chevrolet terminology, not Ford. But you know, um, I'm a, not a Ford guy. But I'm gonna work on a Ford because I like Fox bodies. Paid, um, paid 300 bucks for this car, as it sits. Let me know if you guys think, I, I think I'm about just, like, scuffing it and clearing it, but I don't know. But, yeah, that is the Rustang 5.0. Know what you guys think? Like and subscribe. Yeah, hang on. I'll show you guys sorry for the mess in the garage. Show you guys some updates on the 454 this year. We got the heads painted. Uh, our car's painted, cleared. These are gonna be on it for now. Um here's the engine. We we're, we're gonna buy a crank for it. Cause we just, we checked the bearings the other day and there's a gouge in the crank. So we're gonna replace the crank. That's why you always pull your pan off your engine and check the bearings on a used engine that you know nothing about. And if the bearings look good. I would, I was just pulling one main bearing off and one rod bearing. And I'll give you, a, you know, a little look. It's not going to give you a bunch because there could be bearings, I guess, fucked up down. But I would do that to start with. Because I'll tell you a lot. Oh, one sec. But yeah. I suggest, you know, you pull off at least one bearing, check those bearings. Let's rotate the engine, see if it makes any thunk noises. Um, normal wear is fine. But if you got something showing a lot of copper, almost like copper, but it's probably brass. Then I would replace the bearings, and if the crank looks scarred or scuffed up, I would replace the crank. That way you don't put it in, in a truck or car and have an issue somewhere at the bottom end, you know. We always replace the oil pump. Oil pump. The head gaskets. And the timing chain. That way you can pull the head off and you know what the cylinders look like. You know what everything looks like. And you don't just... 
Because an engine you buy that from like Craigslist or Facebook or let go or something like that, you're not going to know what the cylinders look like with the heads on. So you just pull them off, check the surfaces on the head, and and that's how we found this out. This is the engine that came out of it. And you guys probably won't both see it, but there's a crack here and a crack here. Now, this engine was supposed to be a good engine. So we pulled it out, We'd, we were gonna check everything, put new head gaskets on it, new timing chain in it, new oil pump. That way we don't have to worry about it for a little while until it blows up. But, sorry about my axe deodorant just some days it's just ugh. but uh anyways the cylinders or anything were, were in good shape but we pulled the head off and my father had spotted these cracks and that is because somebody left straight water in this block and it had sit outside and it just launched the engine. We were pulling out the heads. There was the, the whole engine didn't have any antifreeze in it. The radiator, when you drain the radiator, it didn't have any antifreeze. It had straight water. Then we pulled the head off. It was cracked here, and there's water in the block. And oh well, we go to a Gen Gen Six block, which is a really good swap if somebody's going to do it because the only difference between these two engines is this one has a provision for a mechanical fuel pump. This one does not. It's on this side. Um, as you see, it does not have a place for a mechanical... Oh, excuse me. Mechanical fuel pump. And the intakes are a little different. But these Vortec for divorce are... The heads are like they're pretty good heads, I mean, all things considered. Plus, it's all, ours, I'm not sure, I don't know for sure if they all came four bolts, but this is a four bolt main block. One piece rear. Just an all around, in my opinion, it's my opinion, not a fact, better engine than the old style 454. Especially like this one, this one would be a pig. I mean, it's a 1990. 454. I mean, the heads are over there, they're just junk. Yeah, never mind the mess. It's, it's just my mess in here. <sighs> I haven't had time really to clean anything up. But, I mean, I would rather go to that block and have a little bit more horsepower than this one. This is a two bolt main. Just, but it's got good internals. It's got good pistons. You know, somebody. I'm hoping somebody will buy it just so I can have some more money to throw around the projects. But if nobody will buy it, I'll wrap it back up, throw it in my shutout bag. And if I have a 44 that bad crank or, I don't know, broken piston or for some reason, I'll have good pistons, rods, crank, intake, heads. That's what I'll buy it just so I can get, get out of here. Because the other Fox Body parts car has a 351 um, Windsor in it. I'd like to get up on the stand and see how it is. But, yeah. But, yeah, anyways, like and subscribe. Um, if you like the content. We will be getting that SS44 in here and get the floor pants loaded in it. Within a month. The 454 SS should be wrapped up by... I don't know. June or July. Maybe middle of May, depending on if I can sell some stuff. But yeah, if you guys like the content, like and subscribe. I try I'm gonna try to film some more on that on all these vehicles, but it's just hectic. Um the Dakota outside that I think I did a video too on it. Maybe, I'm not too sure. I think I did a video pulling, talking about um, pulling the dash out. That one is being seriously soaked, washed, soaked, washed, trying to get the 
field smell. I'm gonna call it a field smell, but it's like rat shit and piss from sitting in a field for since '09. But after that's done, I'm gonna get the engine around, tell lights in it, and then I'll probably put it up for sale because I got too many vehicles and just need to let one go. So if you know anybody that's looking for an extended cab LE Dakota with bucket seats and a console. Four-wheel drive, 318. Um, let me know. And if they're in the Indiana, in, in the state of Indiana, or even out of state if they want to travel. Um, around the Terra, if they're around the Terra area. Because I'm right outside Brazil, Indiana. So, yeah, <laughs> let me know. I think that's it. I may do some filming later on painting a water pump, painting another engine mount, just piddly shit. Anyways, God bless America. Like and subscribe.